Okay, are we on? Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Zoom class. Okay, we see some people coming on. Hi there, Alice. <laughs> We're going to wait till we get some people on to load up. We have a really exciting day today. Um, Kathy and I are going to be teaching you guys dimensional magic. It's a great product, but let's wait for some people to load up here. We have some people in the waiting room still coming in. I hope everybody's having had a nice week. Um, me and Kathy have been preparing for dimensional magic. Um, a lot of people haven't used dimensional magic. It's kind of this little hidden treasure. So we're excited to teach. Kathy's going to be showing you 10 plus projects using dimensional magic. She's going to be showing you how um, to use dimensional magic making jewelry, rings, pendants, bracelets, all sorts of things. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I wanted to show the bottle to you guys again while people still load up. Let me check over here. I'm going to look at my gallery to see how many people we have on. It looks like okay. somebody has a quick question. Yes. Okay. We got a lot of people. Here we go. I see Shirley's back. Hi, Shirley. Patrice is back. We got a lot of people that have returned. Excited about that. Okay, guys. So welcome to our Zoom class. Uh, I'm Steve Piacenza, and we have Kathy Fillion with Hi, us everybody. also. We want to, um, we're going to teach you guys dimensional magic. How many of you guys have used this product before? Through Mod Podge. Yes, okay. We have a couple people that have used it. And those of you that haven't used it, we're excited to teach this. This is the package that it comes in just to show you guys. It's really interesting stuff. And if you've never used it, I would love if you guys would try this out because what dimensional magic is, it's a, we call it a faux resin. It dries hard and clear, but it's water-based and non-toxic. So it acts like a faux resin, but you don't get all that chemical. So Kathy's going to be teaching you guys 10 plus uh, projects using the dimensional magic. She's gonna be doing jewelry all day today and everything from rings to pendants to bracelets, um, earrings, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of uh, different um, projects. Again, Dimensional Magic, it's a faux resin. It has a shiny, shiny surface and it's three dimensional. So here's a couple, here's a little pendant that we did and it works amazing with Mod Podge. So with just a wood backing, scrapbook paper Mod Podge and then the Dimensional Magic right on top of it, you can see it. So this is a non-chemical product. It's water-based, but it acts just like a hard resin. We're also going to be using bottle caps and doing some cool things with that. These can be turned into magnets. They can be turned into jewelry also. Here's another little pendant item with a well in it that Kathy's going to be showing you. Kathy has so much to show you guys today. Um, I don't know if she's going to get through it all to tell you the truth. <laughs> Also, Scrabble tiles, which are fun. She's gonna show you some washers that you can do with jewelry, some dominoes. So it is a full day of dimensional magic and jewelry making. And I'm going to hand this over to Kathy because um, she's going to teach you it all. But first, just really quickly, we have, let me get my little notes out here. We have a, um, uh, where am I here? Um, ba, 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 ba. We're going to be picking two people, you guys, at the end of at the end of this show uh, for a random drawing for a basketful of Mod Podge products. Um, so two people will get a amazing gifts just at the very end. We'll repeat this a couple times. You're just going to have to um, contact Plaid Crafts directly, but we'll get more into that also later. And also, guys, if you could, um, we're going to take all your questions, answer everything. But if you could just not private message, because I'm not able to do that on this computer. So if you just keep it all the messages on the thread, we're going to answer every question for you. Uh, again, Dimensional Magic today and jewelry. And here's Kathy Fillion to show you all the great stuff. Hey, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I did see a couple of questions going through, so I'm going to address those really quickly. Uh, this is the only size that it comes in. It's a two ounce bottle. Um, and that is a question that we get a lot. Uh, but yes, it's a two ounce bottle like that. 
And um, someone asked if we could do these projects without dimensional magic, and that is yes, you can. Just use your regular Mod Podge. You're not gonna get that hard glassy finish, but you will be able to seal your paper and you will get um, a really cute piece of jewelry. It just won't have that domey finish like that. Um, so like Steve said, please ask any questions. He's gonna be monitoring the chat as we I'm go. Here. I've got so much stuff to show you. So let's just get on with it. Yes. Um, and again, thanks you guys for joining us today and um, let's get started. So I think what I wanna start by showing you is some of the projects that you can make. And um, I'm gonna show you, these are some earrings. So these earrings are done with the Dimensional Magic scrap of paper and recycled Triscuit boxes. So not everything has to be done with a bezel. You can do, um, and these are double-sided with paper. So there's all sorts of things that you can make. Um, and so we're gonna show you that one. I'm also gonna show you how you can, sorry guys, I'm getting used to my that's perfect, uh, yeah, you're right here. in the middle. It looks great. So this is, I'm going to show you how you can embed. Those are seed beads, and believe it or not, that's a little earring I embedded in there. Um, I'll show you how you can do some found objects. So if you have a washer, this is a really fun project for teens and tweens, um, how you can do those. And I'm going to show you some quick stringing methods, too. We've got some Scrabble tile rings. Some cute little rings. These are really fun for kids to make, grown-ups as well. We're also going to share with you some techniques. I'm going to make see if I can catch the light there on how you can use the dimensional magic on your home decor projects. And that will create that raised, can you guys see that? That raised finish. Mm -hmm. And someone's asking if um, we're going to be able to view this at a later time. And yes. Um, it probably tomorrow, if you go to michaels.com, the classes section, all of the different videos will be there for the different classes that Michaels offers. So let's get started, guys. So I want to show you, these are different types of things for making a pendant. You can use a wood chip like this and a bale. This is a gluable bale. Or you could use a bezel like this, which comes with the bale on the top there and um, this is a three pack from michaels and you get the three different colors a gold a silver and an antique gold this comes in a two pack and so this is more of a rectangle bezel and when it's a bezel it has a well so if you can see that there's a little well in there if you're doing it on a poker chip you're not going to have that well and you can do uh, also a drilled hole poker chip, little wood chip like that. So those are and just- Somebody's some asking, can you use other papers other than scrapbook paper? Yes, you can use any type of papers that Absolutely. you can Mod Podge down. So Mod Podge and any type of papers using book pages, scrapbook paper, napkins, whatever you like works amazing with the dimensional magic. Yes, and um, someone's asking about kids paint. Yeah, you can use paint. You can use the dimensional magic over anything like that. These are some fun just found object things that you can use as bases. Bottle caps, dominoes, scrabble tiles, keys, washers, like we said. So if you don't have pendants or bezels or you want something that's more of that look, let's talk about some other bases. At Michael's you can find bracelet blanks like this that has a bezel there. So you can create all kinds of jewelry. Can you see that shiny there? And sometimes even you can find charm bracelets like this. So it's really endless. Once you learn about dimensional magic and see how it works, you'll be looking at those jewelry findings and going, oh, look, these are the earrings that we're going to work with today. That's that. And we're going to be creating a paper insert for those. So you can really use so many different types of things. And then when we talked about embedding, I just want to share with you some of the things that you can embed. One of the things that you can embed is just plain glitter. But any of these little tiny things, like little tiny keys, gems, pearls, you can even use sticky back pearls or gems. And you can find these in different packages at the jewelry section. So these are little gears. So there's all different kinds. I've seen little tiny hearts. You know, you can look around and say, oh, okay, look, we can embed that. 
Some of my things that I like to embed that are a little bit unusual are things like earrings, and I'm going to show you how you can clip the backs of these off. And if you want to look at this one here, for this pendant, I used an earring from this pack. So you can really start to look at your supplies a little bit differently. And then another thing that I really love to use on these is gems that are sold for fingernail art. So little tiny, tiny, they're so tiny. I don't know if you guys can see those very well, but they're really fun. They give a, just a small amount of sparkle. This is a kid's project here. And do you see how those little tiny rhinestones just really make the difference there? Okay, so that's different types of surfaces that you can use and different things that you can use to create your designs. And now let's talk about tools quickly. Anything from punches and scissors um, to a craft knife to cut out your papers. Uh, you're gonna need jewelry pliers if you're doing jump rings. If you're doing bales, you're gonna need heavy duty glue. You're gonna need some paint brushes for your Mod Podge some marking utensils, pencils, pens, and then one important thing to have on hand is either a sewing pin or a toothpick in case you get an air bubble. And we'll use those to pop any air bubbles. And yes, nail art gems work great with Dimensional <laughs> Magic. We use them all the time. So you guys, all every, those drawers that we all have that have all those little bits and pieces, this dimensional magic and those little bits and pieces that have been collecting throughout the years are going to work great. I love, love the nail art. <laughs> supply. Yeah. And there's so much of it. Constantly. So let's review quickly. The earring that I want to show you how to make first is this little leaf earring. Okay. And for that one, we're using a plain earring finding like that. And this one has a little hole at the top where normally you could dangle a bead or something like that. And we're gonna dangle a dimensional magic leaf. Okay, so let's get started on that. What you're gonna do is start with just some recycled cardboard and you wanna pick a backing paper. So this is just any scrap backing paper. And we're gonna attach our backing paper to the cardboard using Mod Podge mat. We'll go ahead and get that attached. And we're just going to add our Mod Podge to the back of the backing paper. And I like to do this part onto the printed side of the recycled cardboard because this is the back. You wouldn't want to put, if you had a light colored paper, you might get a little bit of those darker things going through. So always use the printed part on the back. And then you'll just press that down. And then you're gonna wanna let that dry for about 15 minutes. And I've got a small piece here that's been drying. And the next thing that you're going to do is I have this leaf scrapbook paper. You could use any green scrapbook paper. This is a recollections paper from Michaels. And someone's asking what we're, oh yes, you can use any, old broken jewelry and dimensional magic. Yep, not much odor. And um, it is, it's someone's asking what it is. It's dimensional magic. Yeah, I'll just really quickly, let's go back to me. Oh, you got it, Kath? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a full resin, guys. Dimensional magic is a full raise, resin. It's a hard, um, it gives a hard glass-like surface for any of your craft projects. So that's what Kathy's showing you right now. And someone's asking about 28 days. No, that's really just the dishwasher formula. So um, the dimensional magic, the, you do want it to dry in a draft-free area, but um, overnight is fine. So I've gone ahead, and what I did is I took my earring finding, and I just laid it onto my scrapbook paper, and I used a pencil to trace on the inside. Now normally, I would do my tracing on the back side of the paper, but for this project, I'm gonna do it on the front side so that I can really line it up where I want it to be. And then you will just cut on the inside of that line. So you just cut away your pencil mark. 
And when you're done that, you're gonna end up with two little tiny leaves like that. And now what we're gonna do is, normally I would let this wait, you know, dry a little bit longer, but just for time, I wanna go ahead and show you. You would just turn them over, add a little bit of your Mod Podge. Now I'm using matte, you could use gloss. Just make sure you're on this side. Go ahead and position that. Someone's asking, can you use glue instead of Mod Podge? Um, the Dimensional Magic works yeah. the best with the Mod Podge. The glue has other types of chemicals in it that um, Dimensional Magic can react to and sometimes turn it foggy. So you might want to stick with Mod Podge for that. And yes, all the instructions, um, is there a list of instructions for all of the uh, all of these someones? I think maybe they're saying yeah. somewhere. Yes, yeah. these videos will be, uh, go, if you go to michaels.com, we will be uh, reposting this. You'll be able to see it tomorrow. And also guys, on the Mod Podge box, if we can go over to me really quickly there, let me just show these guys and then we'll flip it right back to Kathy. On the back, here's the Mod Podge box. On the back, they have some really good um, instructions just to let you know. Um, so here's what the box looks like and instructions on the back. And again, michaels.com, you can watch this video tomorrow. So now you can see, and I'm gonna move this before I knock it over. <laughs> that would be quite a mess. I've got it Mod Podge down. And I did go over and someone's asking if you need to seal the back and you can seal the back. Um, but you, you know, it's, it's a personal preference. I seal the back of mine just because I want it to last longer, but you can see they're glued down like that. And now you just want to let that dry. And just for the record, like if you're using a really thick paper, you wouldn't necessarily need to do the cardboard lining on the inside. Each paper is a tiny bit different. But I find that if you don't have that layer of the cardboard in there, your project will bubble up and kind of make a curve shape more. So you want to make sure you're, you're creating a really sturdy, you know, piece like this. See, that's the double-sided piece. There we go. Okay, so now I have one here that's dried and ready to go. And what I want to show you is using a hole punch. You want to do your hole punching to create a place where your jump ring is going to go early on because if you cut these out and then you try to hole punch your hole punch is going to eat your smaller pieces if you're working with a larger piece like this that's not as necessary but any of these smaller like little dainty pieces sometimes we make little fringes or little feathers you're going to want to go in and do that punching before you cut it out and I'm just punching it right, there you go. You can see that, right, oh, sorry guys, at the top. Oh, it looks great. Okay, and then at that point, you're just ready to cut them out. So okay. Dimensional Magic is a water-based product, guys. So um, you can't be submerged in water. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's water-based, it's a, it, I mean, if you're with jewelry, it's holding, it holds up well with, like we said up here, sweat. If it's out in the rain, not so great if it's laying out in the rain, but it, this stuff is, is pretty strong and holds up very, very well. Yeah. And I think like, if you're just like quickly washing your hands or something like that, it's not a big deal, but you wouldn't want to do like dishes or right. take a shower with the necklace on. I don't want to submerge um, it. Someone's asking. Let me see. I'm confused. What is, I'm confused. What is the bottle that she has in Russian? Oh, that's Mod Podge. So basically what Kathy's doing is she's using Mod Podge to put down her scrapbook paper to create the image that the dimensional magic is going to go on top of. Uh, and yes, the whole punch is, you can get it at Michael's. It's just a little tiny, um, uh, you can barely, can you see that? Yeah, it looks great. Go. I think it's called a, a 1 16th punch. Um, so then at this point, you're ready to apply the dimensional magic. And I'm going to just put them here. Actually, you know what? I'll put them on this cardboard. 
That way I can raise them up to show you. And with the dimensional magic, you don't want to shake your bottle because you don't want to create air bubbles. And then I like to just tap a little bit off like that. And then you'll go in on your piece. I have an air bubble already, guys, but that's why we have that pin. Uh, what is the difference between Mod Podge and basically the dimension or uh, resin and dimensional magic? Resin is chemicals, and you have to have a two part mix, and it's you know, it's, it's chemicals and the dimensional magic is a water-based product that does a very, very hard, uh, shiny, hard coat. Um, so it's just an alternative to resin and it works great. So you can see there, I got an air bubble. I applied the dimensional magic just right on the top. And when I do some wells, I'm going to be able to do that a little bit higher up so you guys can see that better. Then you just want to go in, get an air bubble. Sorry, guys, I can't really see what I'm doing. There we go. And pop it with a pin. You got it. And that will um, dry. Yes, and you do not want to shake your bottles, guys, because it will um, create more air bubbles. So you don't need to. You can just kind of... You kind of back and forth motion with your bottle instead of a hard shape. I don't know if you guys can see that glassy coat then. It looks like a piece of glass has been laid over it like that. Looks good. Um, yeah, so when you're doing the dimensional magic, I'm gonna raise this up one more time. You can see that I didn't go to through the hole. If you did, that would be okay. And you could just poke through it with a pin later. Um, you can go right up to it. I can't see what I'm doing because I'm not tall enough. <laughs> yeah, you can. The, the Dimensional Magic is an interesting product. I think we might need one to explain. Wherever you put the Dimensional Magic is where it stays. It doesn't ooze. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't fall off. So if you don't put it at the hole, it's not going to go into the hole. It's going to stay exactly where you put it. It's, a, it's thick. So it works almost like as a gel where it's, it's not a gel, but it's a liquid, but it, where, wherever you put it is where it stays. So, you know, if you work right around the hole, it's not gonna go inside the hole. And the Dimensional Magic takes 24 hours to dry. So when you are done with your project, you want to put it in a non-drafty area and just let it sit and don't move it around. And within 24 hours, then um, it will be completely dry and ready to wear. And someone's asking about using a brush and you can use a brush to apply it. And we do that for lots of projects. It just doesn't create that dome look. It creates more of a um, flat, but super high shiny look. And very interesting. You could use a brush for different projects like uh, cards or something else. You wanna, yeah, you can definitely um, experiment with the Dimensional Magic with a brush because it does it does some great uh, projects with it, great craft projects with, with brushing it on. Um, and you just, someone's asking about cleaning the brush. You would just clean it with soap and water the same way. It's water-based, so you're not, at that, and that's a big difference about, people ask about the difference between resin and this, um, is that, you know, with resin, you wouldn't be able to just water clean up your brushes and things like that. So this is good if you're working with teens or kids also, because it is non-toxic. Um, to do, to attach, this little tiny piece here, we've used a jump ring in that hole. And someone was asking about um, if they had ordered earring pieces that didn't, how long? Uh, about 20 minutes before you do the dimensional magic after the Mod Podge dries. So I think someone might have gotten these earring pieces. Um, I'm not sure who that was. Um, and this earring piece does not have that hole there. So there's a couple of things. Um, if you looked at those instructions, you would cut a shape and then you can glue it onto there using a heavy duty glue like this. Um, and that will, you can create, or some people add a little dangle there. It's just kind of up to you how you would want to do that. Yeah, the Mentro Magic is not a glue, guys. Uh, so there is no fixing earring backings with it. It's just strictly decorative. 
Again, it gives you just a dome, hard, glassy, clear look. So it is not a glue to fix anything with. Yeah. Okay, so what do we got going on next, so, Kath? Um, putting them on the cardboard. And yeah, it's E6000. And I have it just sitting on the cardboard like this. You could put a little wax paper under there, but, and also it does just go to the edge to the edge and it doesn't really drip off. That part there where it dripped off was where I accidentally did that. Um, but when I show you the wood chip, you'll see it's, it just doesn't even flow off. So for the jump rings, I just wanna show you quickly. This is very hard to show you guys. <laughs> Sorry, our projects are so tiny today. But you would just attach your jump ring. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm doing, just attach the jump ring right in there. And that's what creates that earring. See back there? And then for these leaves like this, it was the same exact technique, except for we just used an ear wire and a jump ring to attach that. So this is one of my favorite, actually, where's the other one? Here we go. Two earrings. This is just so simple and it's double sided. And someone was asking, could you do this side too? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, you could switch your jump ring around <laughs> and have two different pairs basically. So the same way we did those leaves, we use these, but we just cut that leaf out of the scrapbook paper. So, so many times when I'm looking at scrapbook paper, I'm like, ooh, look, I could make an earring out of that. Um, there's some other fun, we're gonna talk about papers in a second, but even like, these pretty butterflies. This is what we use on the wood chip. So you really start to look at paper a little bit different, thinking about, oh, what can I cut out of that? And then here's just some really sweet little ones using um, some oval shapes. So you can really make these in any shape that you want. Yeah. Um, and you can, yes, you, you, once it's dry, you can cut into it, um, depending if, you know, if you, if you want to detail it out with the detail scissors, you can definitely go around the dimensional magic and uh, cut around that. Now what I want to show you is um, how you do a non-bezel, but a poker chip pendant. And this is that butterfly paper that I just showed you. And this is a poker chip here. And we're using the um, bale on there. So how it started, oh, if you don't want to do bales, you can drill a little hole into your project and use a jump ring that way. Let's see if we can see some of that shine on there. There we go. So that, um, you can either do the hole, drill the hole, you would drill it beforehand, okay? Uh, it works on a canvas, but um, not as the glue, just as the topper just as the decorative glass finish. Yeah, I'm typing some of these in cap too. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> just so you can concentrate on your working. So you're gonna start with a plain wood chip and I have this butterfly scrap of paper and I use a circle punch. So one of my favorite things to do is when I'm looking at surfaces like this or bezels, I look for punches that are the same size. Um, it just makes my life a whole lot easier. So I use the circle punch. If you're not going to use the circle punch, of course, you would just place your chip where you wanted it and trace around it and cut it out. So people are asking which is the best uh, drilling tool for jewelry making. We use a couple. Yeah. Um, I, I personally like the Fisker's um, hand drill mm -hmm. because it, it doesn't plug in. It's super easy to use. Um, but we also have a Dremel. Um, it's, you know... Some people use a literally like a awl and a hammer, so. Yeah, and as far as the drill bit goes, it would definitely depend on what type of, um, you know, components oh. you're using with it. Right, and how big you want that hole. Right, and fabric, uh, yes, if it's little bits of fabric, like if you're gonna put that inside of a bale or something, uh, it works on a large, large scale fabric. Uh, that's questionable because we've never yeah. done anything bigger than really um, you know, highlighting areas, it works, but, and, and put in into jewelry, but we've never done a really giant piece of fabric. 
Yes, well, I think if you're using fabric, what would be most important is that you're going to put your fabric down onto your project and then you're going to really want to seal the top of that with Mod Podge gloss or matte um, or the fabric formula because you wouldn't, you want to create a top surface that the dimensional magic will stick to and not absorb into the fabric. Right. So just make sure you have it, you know, properly sealed up. So for the wood chip, you're just gonna add the Mod Podge to the back of your decorative paper. Now you can do this with copies of family photos. You can do it with magazine cutouts. I mean, anything. We did a school project with these. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more under there. And the kids just did layers and layers of um, magazine cutouts with like pop stars and you know things like that words and they just all turned out adorable it was a class project so you want to just go ahead and do that put that on and then top coat it and i really think it's important to top coat because you don't want the dimensional magic to um to pick up any of the dyes that are in the paper so by top coating it you help prevent any bleeding so I've got one that's dried already. So this has been top coated and it's dried and it's ready for the dimensional magic. And this is what it's gonna look like when the dimensional magic is on there. So I'm going to attempt to do this a little bit higher for you guys. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, ready? So we're gonna just start. Here we by go. Popping off. And then you just start at the outer edge and you go all the way around. Oop. All the way around. You can see it's not going off the edge. Now I'm holding this tray in the air and it's not going off the edge. No. And I'm standing on my tippy toes. <laughs> and it also dries completely clear. So it's going on foggy guys, but it dries clear, clear, clear. Well, it doesn't go off the edge, Kath, because I think that's what the magic part is, right? Yeah. Oh, hopefully you guys can see that good. Yes, and it looks great. Then that is when it's dry. And I'm kind of blocking my light, so let's see. I'll bring that back down. And then once it's dry, these are bales, and these are for Michael's, too. These are, um, I think these are um, beetle on. So that's the bale, it's flat on one side. This is perfectly flat, okay? And then you'll flip it over and you see how you have the side where the bale kind of goes up. That's where you want to glue down. So you glue the bale to the back of the wood chip and then you can just string it up onto anything that you want, ball chain, or a little leather cording. This is the poker chips. These wood chips are really fun uh, teen project. They the kids love making them because they can you know if it's a slumber party they can make a whole bunch of them. You can get a giant bag of those wood pieces for not very much money. Yeah, these are great gifts, guys. Yes, and it'd be uh, fun to make uh, a uh, a lot of them. So let's go back. Really, I, people want to see what the packaging looks like, and this is the packaging of the Dimensional Magic. So if we can flip on over, here is the package. You can see that, this is how it comes. Here's the bottle itself, but this is the packaging. So you'll see this at Michael's in the Mod Podge area. And I, like I was saying earlier on the back, it gives you some great instructions also. So you can kind of follow um, with this video that we're doing at michaels.com, it'll be tomorrow. And this is what the package looks like at the store, at Michael's itself. So just to show you guys that really quickly. Someone's asking how much it costs. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's about $6. Yeah, I was going to say under 10 for sure. So yeah, I think it's it, like it, it lasts a while. I uh, mean, you can do a lot of projects with one bottle. Oh, yeah. In fact, everything that I'm showing you today was I didn't even go through half a bottle. So um, I want to show you a couple other things that you can do with wood chips. Uh, first of all, these wood pieces, they come in smaller sizes, too. Okay. And <laughs> somebody said you're giving away all my secrets. Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
So you can do pin backings on them or magnet backings. Um, these were some earrings, these green earrings I bought at some, I don't know, Target or Forever 21 or something. I don't know. But um, we did wood chips with um, this brown scrapbook paper on it and just glued them to it. So you can even alter pieces of existing jewelry that you have, just like that. So someone's asking how to make it waterproof and that would take another product to put on top of it. Exactly. But I'm not sure you can do that because it will definitely interrupt the clearness of um, what the dimensional magic does. Um, so that's yeah. I think too, to you know, Steve, and, and to everybody, if resin is awesome. We love resin. Absolutely. Um, and if you want to make something that's going to be waterproof and be that, use resin. Um, if you want to do something more like this, then I would use Dimensional Magic because it's non-toxic. There's nothing to mix. Yeah. You can do it with your kids with no problems. Um, but, you know, if you want something that's like you're going to be able to put in the washing machine or on your clothing or something that you put in the uh, clothing washer, you know, that would need to be a resin uh, yeah. product for sure. We see um, okay, so next, guys, I want to show you a few fun things. Have you guys seen Mod Podge Sparkle before? Uh, if someone's asking about photos, yes. Oh, yeah. So just make sure you use uh, copies. Laser. Photos. Yeah, laser copies. So no. you can add glitter to this as well. And I want to show you this sweet pendant here. Let's see. Can you see that glitter in there? Oh, yes. So this was a um, bezel with a well and scrapbook paper. And then what we did was we added a little bit of Mod Podge sparkle. Can you see that sparkle? It's hard for me to tell if you guys can see it. Keep going, Kath. Yeah, just... If you keep moving like that, we can see it well enough. Okay. Uh, yes, you guys, 24 hours is, I would just say 24 hours, you are completely safe. After you finish your project, just put it in a non-drafty area for 24 hours and it's, you're, you're really safe with that. And then here's um, just this cute one with some uh, galaxy paper that they had. This has, this is a really fun one because it has all the different star signs on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you wanted to do a wood chip or something or a pendant and just- Can you hold that pendant up again, Kath? Uh, this one? Yeah, the star one. Yeah, I'll try to hit the light on that one just to show. There you go. There you go. And that's in a, in a well. Mm -hmm. This is the rectangle bezel. That's from Bead Landing. So okay. I'm going to show you that one too. So again, looking at your papers, like this is a really fun one. If you wanted to make gifts for people, yeah, you can use regular glitter too. You can absolutely use, if you're going to use regular glitter, I like to mix it with a tiny bit of um, Mod Podge though, so it doesn't float away too much. Um, okay, so now I just want to show you. So we have a $4.99 at Michael's which ah. could change in different states, of course, but we have $4.99 at Michael's, and that is coming from what state? Let's see. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna fill this one for you. So Illinois. I've got a couple of flat back rhinestones and then the glitter in there. And then I'll show you again. I didn't get a bubble on that other one. For the well, it's the same deal. You just go right around and I'm going over all the glitter and the gems. I'm sorry if it's shaky, guys. I'm You're doing good, Kath. It looks great. Tray up. Yes, you can do this over metal. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you how you can do it like over vintage keys. It works like on paper. metal and it works on wood. It works on plastic. It works on paper. And then I like to start, you know, going around the outer edge and then filling into the center. Just there like so. Beautiful. Now let me see. We did not get an air bubble. I'm doing so good today. <laughs> so again, you're going to let that dry for 24 hours. And this one I just strung up on a little bit of silk cording, just kind of going for a little bit of a romantic look. And when it's dry, you've got that nice glass finish with a little bit of sparkle. 
Can you use this on molds? So if you're asking if can you fill a mold up, let it dry and pop it out, um, it doesn't work well that way like a resin would. This is more of a surface completion, like what Kathy is showing you now. It's more of an embellishment on top of something else, um, not so much as a thick piece like a mold would be where you let it dry and pop it out, no. Right. Okay, and now I just wanna show you, um, on. I've talked about hole punches and how much I love them. So most of these hole punches are matched up to uh, different sizes, like one inch circle, one and a half inch circle, that kind of thing. If it's a rectangle like this, um, and I'm going to be making a bunch of them at gifts or something. I like to create a little paper template. This is just a little bit of recycled cardboard. And that um, just slips right in and that just shows me my size. So if I'm making a bunch, or if somebody's making a bunch for gifts or for a holiday bazaar or something like that, I'm a huge fan of making a template in advance. And then the nice thing about having a template is you can take that template and move it over your paper looking for what you want to highlight. So if you can see here, it's not like you're necessarily just, you know, cutting out these perfect squares. I only wanted that part of the design. So it's really important to create that template. It only takes like two seconds. Yes, Michaels has uh, tons of wood surfaces and wood chips that you can oh. select from. And uh, they're asking, can you put Dimensional Magic on top of each other once it's dry? You can. Um, but again, it's, it's going to give you a different look and a different effect. It depends on what kind of craft project you're doing. Uh, once, you know, a, a layer of it's put down and dries, that's the clearest it's going to get. You might run into uh, the problem of if you let something dry and then add it on top another layer, you might interrupt that clearness. Right. So here is, I just want to show you, this is our piece with our little star sign there and this is the Mod Podge Sparkle and you just want to go in and add, you don't need much, just the tiniest dot and that'll dry clear but with a little bit of glitter on it. Just like so. Just like that. And then you would set that aside and let that dry. Oh, I would let it dry a good two hours because the one of the things with Dimensional Magic is you don't want to introduce it to something that's wet. So you don't want those to bleed together. So you would let that dry and then you would be ready to add your Dimensional Magic. Let's see if I can, you can see that little tiny flake in there. It just adds a little kiss to that, which go. is oh, that nice. You want it, you know, more of an all over glittery look, you do more something like that. So you can really just add different things to it. If you wanted to do um, loose glitter, you absolutely can. Um, but I would mix it with a little bit of just regular Mod Podge gloss or matte. It wouldn't matter. And um, do it that way. So I want to talk about some other fun things. So kids really love doing these bottle cap jewelry pieces. And that's just a little fun sun scrapbook paper. And on that one, I glued some tiny gems to it. And um, someone's asking about dried flowers. You would have to seal the dried flowers with Mod Podge because you don't want the dimensional magic to bleed with the flowers because it may turn, like if you had a purple flower, it might turn your whole look purple. But if you seal it with the Mod Podge first, you should be okay. So you can do something like that. You can, um, here's our little sun. I went ahead and prepped one out. And I just want to show you filling a bottle cap. So for the bottle cap, we punched a hole in the top. Okay, can you see that hole pretty good? Yep. Okay. Yes, this works great on glass. And same deal, you're just gonna go around and fill that in. This is a really good um, slumber party craft because the kids can make these bottle caps and then in the morning when they wake up, they're all dried and ready to go. So just like that, if you want to do a bottle cap. Again, that can be a pendant. You just punch a hole. They, um, they sell punches like this that go through metal. This one is a paper one. Um, so you just want to use something that can go through metal. If you don't have that, 
Um, many people, where's my, uh, take their bottle cap and lay it down like this and you put a nail there and you just hammer it and that will give you a hole. So you just use a little tiny nail. Um, Here's so a that's a before really and after fun. on this one, Kathy, with the bottle cap. Oh yeah, yeah. You can see this one. There's a before and after. So plain bottle cap and then this right here is just a punched out piece of scrapbook paper and you can see the dimensional magic. You can kind of see the shine. It's super, super glossy. So it's got a nice thick layer of dimensional magic in there right uh, over the scrapbook paper. You can see how shiny that is. Um, no, the, the lifetime of the bottle of dimensional magic is like well over three years. And same with Mod Podge. Yeah. So you don't have to. The only thing I would say is um, before you go to put it away, just clean your tip, you know, so because you, you don't want that to dry all around the tip there. I don't know if you can kind of see, but it does get a little bit kind of clumpy at the top. So I just, you know, pluck that off and give it a clean real quick. Um, now I want to show you, this is a, just a domino that you could glue a backing to, uh, like a magnet or a pin or a bale. You know, you can just do whatever you want. So again, looking at objects a little bit differently. This one has, um, I always like these types of papers too, where it just has text or music notes, just kind of a background print. It could be anything. And then I glued these little tiny keys to it. And then we're creating kind of a well just there on the top. Yes, all the papers are Mod Podge down first. Mm -hmm. And then it's, if you're going to embed, you embed and then the Dimension of Magic goes on top of that. So it's always Mod Podging paper down to your surface first, let that dry for 20 minutes, and then the Dimension of Magic on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, just like we did the, um, the pendant, the circle pendant. So you just, you start with whatever your base is and you've got to attach the paper, seal it with the Mod Podge, then you're ready for the Dimensional Magic. Yeah, we're using Dimensional Magic, guys, for you people, got people, eh, ladies that have just tuned in, ladies and guys, there's a couple. Um, dimensional Magic, there's the bottle right there. It's a faux resin and it's a, um, it's a, it gives a hard glass-like surface for any of your craft projects. And Kathy is showing you how to make jewelry today. Uh, it takes overnight to dry, 24 hours. So here I've gone ahead, I got my domino, and I used the Mod Podge mat to glue down that paper. And I want to show you how easy it is. You can just use, I have the three tiniest embellishments. We were laughing when we were setting up, because I was like, nobody will be able to see these little keys. So I've we got these little well. tiny keys. And these are in the jewelry department at Michael's. So if you want to glue those down, you can just use Mod Podge. So you just add kind of a clump, and then another one, and then a third one. Again, these could be gems. They could be little heart shapes. I just saw these keys, and I thought they were so cute. Whoa, I almost lost. <laughs> okay. Hey, Kath, can you show a Mod Podge bottle when you have a shot? Yeah. <laughs> so you just drop them in, okay? Just drop them right into a big blob of Mod Podge. Oh, uh, thank you. Work. We've been working together forever, so the teamwork works nicely. Thank you. <laughs> so you see, that was the same. This was just the big old blob right there. And then there we go. There it is, just dried and ready for dimensional magic. So let me set this aside. Yes, this is the two Mod Podge formulas that I'm working with are Mod Podge Matte. That's the yellow label. You can use gloss. I like to use matte when I'm doing dimensional magic because I don't like the gloss and then the gloss. To me, it's not, it doesn't make it more glossy. It's sometimes I, I feel like it might get even more of like a little bit of a line or a ridge in it. So I like to use the matte or the satin. And then the other formula that we're using is, oh, look at my bottle, it's really sad. Oh. It's, it's, it's been well used. Let me give you the pretty bottle. This is the real bottle. Yeah. <laughs> this is the bottle. To That's show. the TV bottle right there. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? This is my real bottle. Yeah. <laughs> 
So this is the sparkle. It's well loved. I use it on everything. No, the dimensional magic is what will seal the keys in place. So what Kathy just did was on top of the domino, she put a piece of scrap paper using the Mod Podge. She put a dab of the uh, Mod Podge on top of the scrap of paper to embed the keys, let that dry for about 20 minutes, and then the dimensional magic will go on top of that. So I have one that's drying, and I'm gonna do my little trick here again. And let's see. I like to go ahead and just do a little starter. That way, if you do have an air bubble, it goes away. Put my glasses on for this one, guys. Let's see. And for this, you can go over the keys, or you can go around the keys. And I kind of just did a combo of both. And I really want to see if you can see, it's not going off the edge. It just, I don't know, it's just magic that way. Yeah, it's thick. So it's a thick product. It's almost a, a, a gel-like. And again, uh -huh. what I was saying with the holes, if you guys do have um, holes that you're going to string something through, just don't go over the hole. You go right around the hole and the dimensional magic will hold exactly where you put it. And you just kind of keep filling in. And you could go over the whole, so I'm just gonna show you, you can go over the whole key if you want, or you can just kind of go over parts of it. That's right. The 20 minutes is, you let the Mod Podge dry for 20 minutes. The Dimensional Magic, we okay. suggest 24 hours for the Dimensional Magic, which would be your last step. So once you're done with all the steps, you put your dimensional magic, set that like what Kathy's right now would be set aside in a non-drafty area for 24 hours. So I did manage to get myself an air bubble. I don't, so you can see that air bubble right below the key. And if you get an air bubble, let's see if I can pop, oh, I popped it. You yeah. just wanna use a sewing pin. A toothpick will work too, but a pin is a little bit sharper and I feel like it works better. Oh, sorry, guys, I just moved it and I dripped. But that's also, it, it went off, Kathy, because you're not working in a, you know, <laughs> you've got some, you're holding it up and moving it around, you know, if you were working on a flat surface, that would have never happened. And also, the thickness is dependent on how you pour it on, and that's the key to it. You have to work with Dimensional Magic for a while kind of to understand how much you're going to put on. It kind of does the work for itself. And you'll understand that once you get a bottle and start playing around with it a little bit, it doesn't take very long to understand how thick you, you're, going to, you're going to need it, especially if you're covering an item or on top of uh, a surface that you're embedding into. You'll be able to uh, figure that out when you're working with the bottle itself. The other thing is, um, People are asking the thickness. I would say it's it's almost um, perfect as well. nail polish thickness. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Like yeah, it's like that. It, it feels a little bit like nail polish. It's right. not nail polish, but that's kind of the the um, on the bottle cap. We use the folk art. Oh, folk art. Yeah. Folk art paint. So next, I want to show you a little bit more about embedding. We did those keys on the top. Um, but this is a well pendant, okay? And we've got all sorts of things going on in here. On these blue flowers, it's gonna be hard to see, but I added a tiny dot of glitter. And some of these, I feel like they're almost like little tiny pieces of artwork. So, you know, you can just do whatever you want on them. I've got seed beads, I've got a resin flower, and then this is an earring. So if you wanna do something like an earring, I've got like, um, let's see, let me pull these over. I've got my bezel here. And these are from Michaels. They come in a two pack. You get one antique gold and one of the um, antique silver that I did the stars in. So I Mod Podge down the paper, just like that. And I'm going to use, I use the sparkle Mod Podge. I'm going to use some seed beads. If you have those holeless beads, some people call them caviar, you could use those. Now this is an earring, just a little stud earring from one of these um, value pack kind of things. Uh, and you can just take a wire cutter, just like so, and snip the back of that off. I'm going to cover it so it doesn't go flying into my eye. And you can see how quickly 
you've now created a really beautiful embellishment. So when I'm at the store, I'm always looking at things and thinking, what else can I do with that? So, or, that or the drawers that we all have full of bits and pieces. Yeah. Well, that's so true. And like yeah. yard sale jewelry or thrift shop jewelry, yeah. you can just chop all that up. So. Yes, the, the, uh, this recording will be available tomorrow on uh, michaels.com. It's right up there in the comments right now. So you can check from the very beginning of um, everything that we've done today, tomorrow on that website. So I wanna show you with this, um, how you layer up some of these different pieces. So I'm adding just a dot there and I would add my resin flower just like so. And then let's add a little bit more here and we'll put our earring there. Let's layer it up. And then we can go in, add more there, and then we'll add a little bit up here. You can add color, guys. You can add big pigment powder and acrylic mm -hmm. paint and all that. You wanna, you wanna um, test everything out because it does all sorts of different things, but you can try it, sure. And these are just some seed beads. You can just throw some seed beads in there, any colors. And I like to keep a little toothpick on hand. So once this is in, you can kind of just start maneuvering them to wherever you want them to be. And it's all milky right now, but this is all gonna dry clear. This is the exact same way that that's the Mod Podge, correct, Kat? Yeah, that's the Mod Podge. Okay. So you glue everything down with the Mod Podge first. So glue all your little embellishments down, and then you top coat it. Wait 20 minutes. Yeah, well, for that, you would probably have to wait a couple of hours. Because a little thicker. Yeah. Look how thick that is. Yeah, it's Oh, yeah. Thick. Oh, wow, yes. A couple <laughs> hours for sure. So then you would just seal it. The same way we added the Mod Podge to all the other projects, you can kind of go around. You could go over them if you want. I went around everything. Yeah, can you hold that up? Oh, there you go. Very pretty. Yes, this is unique, you guys. It's really great. It's a faux resin. It's water-based, so you don't have to worry about the stink. You don't have to worry about the, the chemicals. You can use uh, Dimensional Magic with kids. Kids love to make all sorts of projects with Dimensional Magic. It's super durable. Um, you just don't want to submerge it into water because it is a water-based product against your skin. It's fine. It's not going to um, disintegrate or change if it's against your skin. Even if you're, someone said, uh, what about a little bit of sweat? It's not going to be a problem. You just don't want to soak it in water, but it is a super hard, clear surface like a resin. It's almost, I'll, I'll go as far to say that you almost wouldn't know the difference between dimensional magic and a resin if they were kind of next to each other and you were touching it. So that's how hard it is. Yeah, and I think too, like the idea of being able to do um, the kids uh, crafts with it is so important because um, with resin, that would be a little bit tricky unless they were older, like, you know, um, in well into their teens probably. But this is so great. I, I have a six and seven year old. So we've done many, many dimensional magic projects together and I don't ever have to worry, which I really love. Um, and I forgot to show you guys one thing. We were doing the bottle caps um, and I forgot to show you guys this one. So this is a milk cap lid, um, which you can also do. And so this is embedded the same way I just did that other one, but this is embedded with chunky glitter flakes, a cute mermaid, that's a button. So, you know, you can just do any kind of different ones that you want. Those are uh, pearl beads and then I just strung it up on a, you know, just with some beads like that. But that's a milk cap. Yeah, it's great so for recycling. Working with littler kids, you can do something fun like that with milk caps, you know, on and on. Um, and then we were talking about paper. I've got a few more things I wanna show you, but I do wanna show you about this type of paper. Um, so if you find a paper design that you love and it has a really big print, many times Steve and I will reduce prints down to create things for 
different size pendants. So if you have a paper that's large, don't be afraid to say, oh gosh, I love that print, but wouldn't it be fun if it was only an inch tall? Just shrink it, <laughs> just shrink it and use it. Yes. You know, I like to look for papers that have small all over prints like this. This is what we did. Um, where's our little circle earrings, oval earrings? Yes, you can cover the whole design with dimensional magic or you can just do certain areas. Um, you know, Kat, do you have a, a project just where it's just in certain areas? Um, I do, not on any of the jewelry, but- um, uh, The letter F, people are asking about the letter F, so we can okay, show so that. This, um, this is a, just a paper mache letter from Michael's, some watercolor paper. I just Mod Podged it down, and then I went in and I just highlighted there you go. Oh, oh, there's perfect right there, there Kat. So you can see right there. Highlighted yeah. the flowers. And that is as easy as, let's see, here's one. This is great for gift cards also, you guys. The gift cards you buy in the store, you can totally uh, embellish these with the dimensional magic. I got to put the glasses on, guys. <laughs> put them on. Okay, so when I'm doing it on a letter, I don't do that poor method. I do more of a sort of schmear and I go right up to the edge. I'm just barely pushing on this to get some to come out. This is my favorite. So many people love this F. I think a lot of, I think everyone's having a lot of ideas in their heads right now what they can do with dimensional magic. Yeah, so there's that. So I just put it on there. No, I don't want it to run too much, but let's see if you can see it a little bit. Still yeah. kind of wet, so it doesn't really show till it's. Yeah, we got it. That's uh, great. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I want to show you a few other things where we did some embedding. Thank you for the compliments, everybody. Oh, thank you. I want to show you a few more things where you can embed different types of things, layering up. You know, just this is a little tiny seashell. This is some more of those flowers. You can layer papers. So that was a different cutout from that. So look for, you know, if you're looking at um, mm. well, shrinking technique, you know what, I just, <laughs> I just go to Kinko's. <laughs> yes, also with the three, can you hold that up real again, click Kath? You can see also the way Kathy did it, even with the orange flower, she embedded that with half resin. So in other words, she filled it up and only went up half the flower and half the flower is sticking up. So mm -hmm. somebody was asking about that earlier with the mermaid, if you submerged it completely under the dimensional magic and you don't have to, you can see even that shell is halfway up. So half of it's submerged, half of it is not. Does that give you a good there? Yeah. There you go. Um, and then I'll just, I'm gonna quickly show you this tray really fast, but this is also really fun. Uh, if you're doing holiday bazaars and stuff, that's just a little button. But you know, you can do um, Halloween, Christmas holidays, you know, whatever, family photos, that kind of thing. Um, if you're doing family photos, make sure you're using coffees, coffees. So yeah, and you just make everything down with, with the, um, uh, uh, the printer. Yeah. Or copier. If you don't have a printer that does it, you can go to the copy machines and take your, your paper and shrink it down to uh, whatever size you'd like. Uh, yeah, this, this video will be um, available for playback tomorrow. Michaels.com. So here is a washer with just some flower paper on it. And I'm going to show you how you um, can string up washers. Or if you're looking at beads, these are called donut beads a lot. Um, so just get any kind of cording or sari material or stringing material. And you can go either way. You can go up and under depending upon the way you want that. This is another great project for teens. And um, boys really love these too. You can do smaller ones and um, do papers on there. And a lot of the teen boys love these too. So I don't know if they'd want this flower design. <laughs> no, no, but, yeah. I want something a little bit more rock and roll. Right. But here we've got that donut shape. Okay. And we'll just start with the dimensional magic again. It was, oh, 
There we go. It was Mod Podge down just like we did all the other ones. And let's tap off for the same deal. We're just going to start on that edge and go all the way around. And hopefully, you guys can see that good. And then go right onto that inner edge. Just like that. And then you'll let that dry for 24 hours. And not move it in a non-drafty area. Yeah, you definitely shouldn't do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> you You're a hero. Do yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, we cut that paper with X-Acto knife. Um, so, uh, like a template. Yeah. Um, the, the donuts are a little bit harder, but I have done a two hole, I, I, Steve knows, we joke, I have like my coveted punches, but you yes. can punch a circle and then if you do it right, you can punch a circle in the center, depending or, on the Or remember, you can take your scrapbook paper, get the backside, put down the washer, trace around it. You can use your scissors to cut the, uh, you know, the pencil line and then use the X-Acto for the inner. So it works, it works out pretty well. So these are kind of fun too. These we have um, just some keys and on this side, I put the glassy finish on there. there. So if you do some mixed media stuff, these are kind of fun just for um, adding a little bit of dimensional magic. And it's the same deal. You just can go in, this is no paper. So there's no paper down, but if you wanted to add, you know, just some gloss and texture to something, add a little bit of depth. Yes, it's it. shiny like uh, resin, guys. It's, it's almost identical. So then when that dries, it'll dry clear and shiny. So it does work awesome over paper, but you can also do it on all sorts of different types of materials or charms that you find where you just want to add something a little bit different to it. I like this one. Can we use it over cornstarch Christmas ornaments? And I think the answer, I've never done it, but I think that answer would be yes. Yeah. The one thing I would just say is that I would make sure whatever, like salt dough ornaments or anything like that, make sure that you seal it first with the yeah. Mod Podge. Everything should get sealed with Mod Podge first. That way the Dimensional Magic has a... Um, a primer almost. Surface. Yeah, like a primer, like a sealed surface. So then it's not seeping into anything. Um, because if you don't seal it, papers can bleed depending upon what kind of ink is used. And you might end up with a foggy look, or if you're using paint or something, um, you know, that's tricky. Yes, someone has a brilliant idea. You punch the center circle first, then you put your washer over there it. There you go. Around. Right. So smart. <laughs> Um, also, someone's asking how to put the hole in the wood chips, and you would use a drill for that. Yeah. We use this Fiskar hand drill that doesn't plug in. Um, so it's just, it's like a little crank drill, and it can go through. It does it in two seconds. Um, I want to show you another fun, uh, I think this is, oh, our last project, except for I did want to share with you all these beautiful floral pendants, too. There's so, again, if you're doing something for a bazaar or something like that, you can imagine what, you know, you can have a tray of these out or as gifts, and they're really, they make up so quickly, and you can string them on ribbons or any kind of thing like that. But if you're looking at, you know, look at scrapbook papers and come up with a coordinated look, Especially if you're doing like holiday things, you could do all different types of snowflake papers or Christmassy papers or our favorite Halloween papers. <laughs> yes. Um, and then another fun thing for um, teens, tweens, and bazaars are these cute little Scrabble rings. So these are really easy to make. Um, we just start with a Scrabble tile and we're doing a ring. But if you wanted to do a pendant, you would just glue one of those bales. This is kind of an oversized bale for this one. They make these smaller, so you could get the smaller ones, which are a little bit less expensive. And you would just glue that to the back of your Scrabble tile. Now, I like to do the printed side um, is what you would glue to, because there is a little indentation there. And again, it's dark. So if you have a light colored paper, that might pop through and you wouldn't want that to happen. So you'll do all your gluing and stuff 
on the um, plain wood side. I've got one here that's already been glued. That's just a plain ring blank. And there you go. And then we Mod Podge down with the matte Mod Podge, just that cute little piece of um, flowers. And you can see from this piece of paper here, how many of these rings you could create, <laughs> which is one piece. <laughs> yes. um, uh, you can do it on pictures, yes, but um, you need to have the pictures have to be laser copies, like not real photos. Um, it's not inkjet because the wetness of the inkjet and the, the printing, it, could, it can run when the dimensional magic or the Mod Podge is on top of it. And then you would be very sad. The laser printing's the best. And also guys, just really quickly, we're picking two people for a random drawing for a basket um, of Mod Podge products when we wrap this up. Um, so we're gonna be doing it uh, randomly picking in the chat area. So if you haven't um, said anything in the chat area, you can just say, Hello is good enough, so just so you're entered into it. Yes, yes. Or say where you're from, either or way. Or say yes. where you're from, um, anything, just so you're on that chat board, because we're going to be randomly picking from there. My goodness, you guys, my camera is in such a different place than normal with these Zoom meetings. <laughs> I know. So, there you go. There though. you can see the glass finish. So um, one of my favorite, I, I normally have a big tub of these dried beans. So if you're doing um, like a bracelet like this, you know, obviously this can't stand up on its own. So I like to sink it in a whole bunch of beans for it to dry. Um, and I'm gonna show you that technique just using this ring. Same thing, how would I put the dimensional magic on here? I like to glue the bases first um, and then I just center up. I'm gonna raise that up for you to see. I just put that into a, these dried beans I've been using for probably 10 years, same ones. And go ahead and get some of that off. I'm doing like the one-handed glasses put on. And you're doing a good job. <laughs> and then you just go start on that edge. Go around the outside edge first. And then just fill in. Yeah. And again, you guys, an important tip is once you do put the dimensional magic, you want to leave it alone. You don't want to be moving it around too much at all. And just in a non-drafty area and just let it dry for 24 hours. Yes. And someone is asking about the dried beans. So I do the dried beans. What I like about them is that um, you can wiggle your pieces into position. So especially if you have something um, like a large bracelet like this, I sink it into the dried beans and then I can do all my work on there and it will stay level because I can position it and move it around just like that. It is like the, the dried beans with their crafts will be a game changer for you. <laughs> it's so this is fun. One of the few classes I have not felt like leaving after the first 10 minutes. Well, oh. that's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Let me show you guys this really quick. If we, can, if we can switch over to me again one more time and we'll go right back to Kathy. I just want to show you guys what the product looks like because it looks like there's a lot of interest in this. This is the Dimensional Magic that Kathy has been using to make all the jewelry. It comes in a pack like this. This is at Michael's in the Mod Podge section. So there's one full bottle, two fluid ounces. This goes a long way, you guys. So everything that Kathy has made today, um, it, I think she used a quarter of the bottle, if that. And on the back of it, it gives some really great instructions on how to use it. It's pretty simple. And of course, you can go to michaels.com and uh, check out from the beginning, if you guys are coming in uh, later, from the beginning, michaels.com, you can watch the whole video on the Dimensional Magic and how to use it. So I, Steve mentioned how much of the bottle I had used. So I do want to show you, let's see. Um, oh gosh, you can't really tell. You can't really tell, but it's not right. much. It goes a long way. No. I mean, if I, you know what, Stacy? maybe we can go to this camera here. You can put your finger, oh, there you go. You can see it, Kath. So that's like I half a bottle, which was for all the projects that you see, plus all of the projects I've made 
today using it. It's a two ounce bottle. Yeah. So you're not, you really don't use very much. I have done, um, I did this with a, a fourth grade class, I think about 30 students. And most of the kids, we were doing the wood discs and most of them made about four or five different ones. They were doing Mother's Day and Grandma Day gifts and things like that. And I think we went through two bottles with the whole class. And that was with little kids like squirting it out, you know, everywhere and making kind of a mess. But they Thanks, loved it. Yes, thank you guys for, uh, for all the compliments. They're saying great information and stuff and great teamwork. Thank you guys. We really appreciate it. And just to let you guys know, we love doing these, these new Zooms that we're doing. Of course, we've been crafting together for a good 20 years now, Kat. Don't tell. Don't tell. Yeah, it's been a long time. So um, we want to thank Michaels also for your great store. Um, so remember, everything you've seen, you can get at Michaels. Um, Hopefully your stores are open now. Ours still aren't here in California. So hopefully yours are. There's also curbside and online that you can purchase from. So um, Kath, do we have anything else? Should I say one more time, you guys, really quickly? We are doing, we're picking two people randomly. Um, if you have not gone into the chat room yet, just tell us where you're from because we're picking from the chat room. And Plaid Crafts is going to, give you, whoever the winners are, some great uh, products. You can each get a basket with, and Plaid gives some great products. They load up their baskets. Uh, whenever we uh, tell you guys who the winners are, you're going to direct message Plaid Crafts and um, contact them. And they will, um, the, you get all the information. They'll ask you a bunch of information and um, that's it. And they're gonna send you some products. So, um, what else you got over there? Well, I have someone that's asking about um, the earring piece that doesn't have the hole. Mm -hmm. um, and this is that earring piece there. And um, this is traditionally used for doing like wire wrapping around it or something. But if you wanted to, um, I'm not sure who asked, but if you saw the beginning part of the video where we showed how to just do the recycled cardboard, so it's the cardboard in between the two pieces with the dimensional magic on one side. Um, plastic earrings, yep, that works too. So for that, you could cut any shape. If, so you could cut like a modern sort of triangle shape or an oval shape, and then you just use any of your uh, heavy duty glue. You need some a glue that it's gonna be okay for metal. And then you just glue your piece onto there. So you can cut any shape that you want. Very nice. And just glue it over. So that's it, everybody. We right. have so many things to show you. I hope we did okay with the camera because everything was so tiny. <laughs> yeah, it's but. a whole new form. You did great, Kat. Okay, why don't we get to it and pick, we'll pick a winner. Okay, are so you gonna go first or me? Why don't you go first and then okay. I will go second. So good luck, everybody. Okay, so we're just gonna spin the comments. Has everybody commented? Okay, let's see. Last time I just spin. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Okay, close my eyes, okay. You gotta scroll, yeah. Right, okay, spin. Uh, Sheila H. Is Sheila H still with us? Sheila, if you, if you are here, say something in the comments. Sheila H, let me roll down. Sheila H, are you still here? Sheila, Sheila, Sheila. Give her Sheila, a little bit of time. Sheila H, I got a few more messages. Hold on. Sheila H. Sheila H. Oh okay, let's give her a little time. I'm going to do mine now. Okay, you go ahead and spin. Sheila, here we go. And it is uh, Cecilia. Do we have a Cecilia? Cecilia, you said, I love to make crafts with my daughter. So, Miss Cecilia, this is, if you are here, please oh, it's up time. very quickly. Stacy from Michaels, maybe you can, can you see? Oh, there's Sheila H. Okay. She's here. Yay. Okay, Sheila H, please, if you are on Facebook, 
we would like for you to message Plaid Crafts that you are the winner from the Michael Zoom Dimensional Magic Mod Podge class. And Cecilia's um, here also, Kath. Oh, good. Cecilia's here. Okay. okay. Yay, you guys. Yay. Hey, come on in, girls. Guys, my kids just got home. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys, for everything. And thank Michael's for the Zoom class. Again, me and Kathy love to do these classes. Uh, me and Kathy are still separated. So hopefully, maybe the next class, we will be able to be together to do one. Um, that's what we're hoping. Um, and thank you all for joining us and come back next Friday. I'm not even sure what we're doing next Friday, Kat. Do you know? Well, I know what we're doing. Okay, let's hear <laughs> so it. Next, um, we are going to have... Hi, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> Here's my seven-year-old. <laughs> hey, Delilah. Hi, <laughs> So, um, hold on, honey. Let me finish up. So next week, we are going to have, watch the cords, um, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of beachy type projects. Oh, that's right. But we're using Mod Podge and tissue paper for almost all of them. So we're going to be doing bottle lamps. We're going to be doing um, a nice beach themed artwork with sand and... Here's number two. <laughs> yes. And are we using, the, we're using the Ultra in this one, correct? Yes, Kat? we're going to be using the Ultra. The Ultra is spray Mod Podge. Yes. Hi, number two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this will be attaching sand and seashells and all sorts of stuff using the uh, Ultra. That's the spray Mod Podge. <laughs> okay, well, good. Here's okay, so we hope to see you guys next Friday. Again, thank you, Michaels, for the Zoom classes. We love to do them, and we hope yes. all you guys watching are enjoying this. And uh, hope to see you next Friday. And and don't forget, really quickly, there's the bottle again, Dimensional Magic. Uh, check it out. It's in the Mod Podge section at Michaels. They're thank always doing it. <laughs> always. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Guys. <laughs> Bye.